Biology is the only subject where multiplication is the same as division. Stay tuned to discover this fascinating field one video at a time. Two weeks back, I started a new video series looking at sequencing because I believe the technology will complement gene editing companies very well. In fact, if we look at Archie Holdings, we can see Pacific Biosciences featured in the top 10, which is a sequencing company. That, incidentally, is the talking point of today, answering the question, which is better, Illumina or Pacific Biosciences? We explored that in part last week, and it appears that Illumina may have the upper hand when it comes to DNA sequencing. But today, I would like to venture further beyond DNA sequencing to see if Pacific Biosciences may gain the upper hand. And with that, let's dive right in. At the point where this video is produced, I've yet to invest in any sequencing companies. I'm careful like that, because I am a thousandaire and not a millionaire. While DNA mutations is something I focused on, because I was talking about genetic diseases, sequencing technologies can be applied elsewhere. If we look at the central dogma of biology, we say that many genes on the DNA can be transcribed into mRNA, which in turn is translated to protein. And proteins are the main workhorses in the cells. Depending on which gene encodes for it, proteins can be enzymes that catalyzes biochemical reactions, transport proteins that bring specific substances into the cell, and even as secreted hormones where insulin is one such example. Of course, I'm barely scratching the surface by giving only three types of protein functions. There are many more. If there are so many different types of proteins, this means that there are many genes in the DNA in a human cell as well around 30,000 if you want to have a rough approximate. If there are so many genes and not all of them are required at any one time, then how does the cell control selective gene expression? This occurs at five different levels and the details of which will easily fill a four-hour class. So I will only focus on transcriptional level of control, which is the decision to transcribe a gene or not. Even in this level, there are many mechanisms involved, and I'm only going to focus on one of them, which is DNA methylation. This was first observed at CPG Islands. The P represents the phosphodiester bond that joins the two nucleotides together, differentiating it from double-stranded structures where the two bases on two different strands base pairs with each other. These CPG islands were frequently found in front of gene sequences where C base can chemically be modified with the addition of a methyl group. When this occurs, it can attract DNA organizing enzymes that condenses the structure. This prevents the gene transcription machinery from assembling in front of the gene so that transcription can occur. Since there are many control mechanisms in transcription, and DNA methylation is one of them, in what situations do they come in? The short answer is when gene repression is required over a longer term. For example, certain genes encode for proteins that participate in the development of an embryo. This occurs once in the lifetime of a human and for the rest of his or her life, it should be tucked neatly away so as not to interfere with other daily biological functions. And this field of study is known as epigenetics. However, there are times where normal genes that are required constantly become methylated by accident, or genes that are supposed to be methylated are not, and this could therefore lead to diseases. This is clearly different from genetic diseases where a mutation has taken place. There are many instances where epigenetic sequencing may yield important clinical information. This is particularly true in cancer. Once the patient's epigenetic status is determined, epigenetic therapy can be applied to improve the clinical outcome. So the next question to ask is, does Illumina sequencing technology cover epigenetics? The answer is yes, but there is a caveat, let me show you. Illumina's method of DNA sequencing does not work, as it cannot yield that kind of information. So another method using another machine and another flow cell is needed. To start, the process involves the treatment of patient DNA with bisulfite. This chemical takes the methyl group away, returning methylated C's back to the original nitrogenous base C. Those C's that are unmethylated will be converted into a U instead, and uracil is the nitrogenous base that is only found on RNA. During subsequent amplifications on the Illumina flow cell, this uracil will be corrected back into an equivalent T, since only DTTPs are supplied as raw materials. 
For those of you who want a quick refresher on Illumina sequencing technology, you can click on the i button appearing above right now. Once the sequencing results are collected, software analysis will be able to tell if the CPG island is a methylated C or not. If the sequence is read as a T, it would previously be unmethylated. If the result is read as a C, it would then be previously methylated. To make this even more complicated, the DNA polymerase that is commonly used to synthesize new strands originate from a hot spring bacteria. So the enzyme is named as tag DNA polymerase. Illumina's epigenetic sequencing requires a different and more expensive version known as Phi29 DNA polymerase, as its error rates are 100 times lower. High fidelity is required in epigenetic sequencing because we don't want a wrong base inserted due to chance rather than an actual methylated sequence. As you can tell by now, Illumina's epigenetic sequencing has its problems because it needs a unique setup with some unique enzymes and even an extra step at the beginning. Let's see how Pacific Biosciences tackle epigenetic sequencing. Pacific Biosciences has a trick up its sleeve. They make use of the same technology that they adopted for DNA sequencing, which I covered last week. This idea is based on the fact that the DNA structure determines the efficiency of DNA polymerase in forming a new DNA strand. And because the methylated cytosines are considered not a standard structure, the DNA polymerase can take a longer time to slide through the template strand during DNA replication. As you can see in the figure, the time taken to identify the next newly incorporated nucleotide is much longer if the template strand is methylated. In order to determine the results, there's no new enzymes used, there's no need for another machine, there's no additional step, and after the fact, no special analysis is required. Pacific Biosciences has shown here to have gained the upper hand when it comes to epigenetic sequencing. But I'm still not invested in Pacific Biosciences because the bread and butter is still DNA sequencing. And Illumina is currently in the king seat and the company is very sticky. Current users are not going to change unless there's a clear advantage. And there's a dark horse in the horizon. Even though I'm now a biology tutor, I used to do research. And a quick ask around my ex-colleagues tells me those who have not currently adopted Illumina have mainly bought sequencing products from another company known as Oxford Nanopore. This is a British company that's considered in the same cachet as Pacific Biosciences. Both are in the third generation sequencing category. Because this company has not gone public, I will not talk about their technology in detail since we retail investors have no access but I would like to highlight their unique selling point. Just look at their sequencing machine. It has a physical footprint the size of an external SSD that's able to do what Pacific Biosciences do. This makes their use in clinical practice much more appealing. There are less moving parts and less headache. The main problem is that Illumina was an early investor, but they later sued the company for patent infringement. And by 2016, the two companies have settled the dispute and have also completely severed all ties. If Illumina has worked this out, I would have invested in them immediately because the combination of their technology as well as Nanopore's third generation sequencing will have beat out every single competitor. <sighs> but that's not to be. With regards to Pacific Biosciences, even though the epigenetic sequencing platform is amazing, dark clouds are looming in light of Nanopore. The best way to see who is winning is to see which system the end users are adopting. With my quick survey, Nanopore is dominant. So on that basis, none of the two options clearly stand out for me, even though ArcGi clearly favours Pacific Biosciences. Because Pacific Biosciences can do long reads, so can a new upstart, BioNanoGenomics. So let's see how the story plays out next week. And with that, I thank you for staying with me till the end of this video. You've been awesome, and I'm Benjamin Young. See you in the next video.